Welcome to the Love and Victory Show with Val, where we will bring you candid conversation. In each conversation, we will talk about real life ups and downs while tackling unresolved matters. We will also unmask issues and truly speak straightforward and candid about our needs and brokenness while allowing ourselves to exhale so that we can become victorious. This is a place where you can be open to the possibilities of living life in abundance while gaining tools to become bold and complete. So let's get to it. All righty then. Hello, Miss Steph. Hello, Miss Val. And Miss Kayla. Welcome to the Love and Victory Show with Val, where we have candid conversation. And today we will be discussing the power is in your voice. Are we ready to give love, words of affirmation? Are we ready to uh, bless the listeners with the power is in your voice today, ladies? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Sure. Could you guys go ahead and introduce yourself to the listeners? Hello, listeners. So I am Stephanie Alexis. Um, I am an advocate for mental health. Um, I'm currently finishing up my master's in clinical mental health counseling. Um, I'm also a minister, so I love to combine the mental health with theology and religion. Um, I am for the people, and I'm excited about um, talking today about the power in your voice. All righty then. And you, Miss Kayla. I am Kayla Niemer, uh, CEO of the Elevation Plug, newly program coordinator of the Dallas Entrepreneur Center, um, positive influencer, just like to show God in any way that I can in any form, do what he says do, and just continue to elevate people personally and professionally through faith. Did you hear what we got on this? Uh, 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 you, do y'all hear what we have today? Two powerful women that's coming for us today. So I'm ready to just jump into this candid conversation. <laughs> the power is in your voice. So let's just start with it. And I'm just gonna throw this out there for anyone that wants to take it. And we're gonna have a conversation, but I'm gonna throw one thing out there. Okay. Tell us about the first time you realized your voice could be impactful. Ooh. Mm. Wow. Um, I could, I'll go first. Okay. I think the first time, and I don't think I knew at that moment, um, but now when I think back, it was in the third grade, mm. um, I got introduced to poetry and I started writing. And I remember my mom had me write one of her coworkers a poem to give to her husband oh. for her anniversary. And I'm like eight. You're eight years old. Yeah. And wow. I wrote the poem and she was just like, wait, a kid wrote this. <laughs> she doesn't know anything about that. But, you know, I was a shy kid. So how I expressed myself was through writing. And God used that and led me into knowing the power in my voice by pushing me into performing later on in life, almost 25 years later. So that's what kind of helped produce this season of life that I'm in it. now. It all started from bringing me back to that eight-year-old gift and not knowing that I had a voice, but learning how to turn my words and speak them with, with meaning. So Wow. Wow. What about you, Steph? You know, it's funny you talked about going back to elementary school mm. because I was going to go back to elementary school, too. I think I was seven. I was in the first grade and we were it was like Black History Month and they needed someone to do the Martin Luther King speech. Oh, and I volunteered as tribute. <laughs> and I remember I was saying it to my mom and we were reciting it and we were um, and I was in the mirror and I was saying it, and I turned around. And she had tears in her eyes. I was like, why are you crying? I'm not even Martin Luther King. I'm just giving it my best. <laughs> and she said, your voice is so powerful, Steph, Steph. She said, you say those words with so much passion and authority. And it really, I didn't really like, I guess, conceptualize what she was saying. Mm -hmm. But fast forward to now and being a worship leader. And I don't even say things all the time, but I'll sing words. And just to see the power and the anointing of the presence of God, how it breaks the yoke of bondage and chains and trauma and all of those things. And it starts 
with the word from your voice. It does, and you know, it's so funny. We're all talking about as a kid uh, or when we were in school. I think for me, it was middle school, several decades before you guys. But anyway, uh, mine's was standing up and not just going along. And as I teachers would single out people or our kids would get singled out, I would be that one that would say, that's not right. Why are we doing that? You know, uh, why are we treating them that way? Or why are you talking to them that way? And maybe that voice that I had was really advocating for myself because I was bullied. Um, not really, I wasn't so much bullied, I was talked about. And so I know how that felt. And so I would always be that person to say, why are you doing that to them? Why are you uh, picking on them? Or why would you say that? You're a coward. So I guess that was my, that's when I knew I had a voice. I mean, I, I never had to fight because I had my sister to fight, but yeah. I, I, I can put that voice on you, <laughs> make you think I was going to fight. But that yeah. was my, that's when I knew that my voice was there to do something good, not necessarily something bad, but to speak up for somebody else they couldn't speak up for themselves. And fast forward, you're still doing that. You're such an advocate. Well, you know, it's so funny how God does things. And it's you use that word as a, an advocate. I just truly see it as a responsibility. Yeah. I have a responsibility mm -hmm. to be there for God's people, to be there for someone that is not necessarily strong enough at that particular time yeah. to be there for themselves. Or, and not necessarily just because they're not strong enough, but to encourage. Yeah. So I hope he keeps using me and allowing me to use my voice. I hope so, too. He will. Okay, then. What do you believe is the main reason people are afraid to speak out? I think it all stems back from fear of man, fear of man's opinion. How are people going to feel about what I have to say? How are people going to accept my experience? How are people going to respond to my experience? So sometimes it's easier to say nothing mm. than to actually have to deal with the repercussions, per se, of actually vocalizing vocalizing what's transpired in your life and how that's affected you and how you've overcome and how you got through that. And, and do you think that sometimes people are just afraid because if I say something, I may sound like I don't know what I'm talking about? So then people tend to, because what you're saying is so true, but I think people also are afraid of how they're going to sound or what other people are going to think about them. Yeah, and I think some people don't think they're qualified yes. to speak. Yeah. You know, they're like, well, what makes me qualified to speak? Or are people going to see me at a certain level enough to respect me enough to listen? Well, and, and you know what? Just say it. You yeah. know, so those that are listening right now, yeah. it's in you. Just yeah. start having a conversation. Just start saying it. Yeah. You know, just be, re I think if people are mindful yeah. and respectful of others, when they communicate, yeah. then you have a message and a message that can heal and help someone. Yeah. So just start talking and don't worry about whether or not you're qualified. You've already been qualified because God put it in you. That's very true. And don't overwhelm yourself with thinking that you have to share it with the masses. Right. I think right. that's sometimes what is, where the drawback comes from. Share it with the friend. Share yes. it with the confidant first. This is what happened. And build up that confidence to and share and to be, talk. And you need to make sure that you're having a conversation with people that are like-minded mm -hmm. because not everybody so, not everybody is deserving of your conversation or your or mm -hmm. the word that has been planted inside of you maybe yeah. it's not time for you to start sharing it with yes. the masses yeah. God is still developing it because yes. it's one thing to share it but that person also has to be in the place to receive it oh come on yeah. now oh yeah. Okay, y'all, we just going to dig a little deeper over here. <laughs> I'm finding our voice. We're finding our voice right now. Yes. Do you ever find yourself doubting your own voice? Mm. Mm. Probably not, huh? Not these ladies. <laughs> yeah, these ladies. Yeah. is real. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that's so interesting because I think, I know, I know Stephanie and I, and I have had conversations. I think sometimes we don't even know or we can have moments of doubting 
the voice that we have. And like that can be surprising for people, but we're still human. You know what I mean? Like, so we have moments where we're like, hmm, are people really listening? Are they really being receptive to what I'm offering? You know what I mean? Are they really being receptive to what I'm offering? Are they really grabbing it? Well, I tend to follow you ladies. You young ladies are just so powerful in what you're doing and what you're saying and how you're presenting yourself out there. And every time I tune in to you guys, I always gain something. Yeah. And it's so, it makes me feel good to know that you guys are putting out such positive stuff in the atmosphere for uh, other people to gain something from. So yes, they're listening. Yes, we are hearing, and yes, we are receiving, so keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. And purpose ain't always popular. (laughs) Well, well, most of You know what I mean? And the accolades don't always come immediately. So, you know, it it takes patience. It takes understanding that, you know, God is our validation, not always man. And most of the time... Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say most of the time, if you're waiting on man to pat you on your back, you're going to miss it every time. Because they're, I always say they're vicariously watching from behind the scenes (laughs) at what you're doing. And they're gaining out of it. Um, A lot of times people don't want you to know uh, (laughs) what you're doing is good or it's um, relatable or it's helpful only because they're still in a broken place. Anything else on that? We'll just move on to the next one. Now we're going to use our voice um, to be a little more powerful. Mm. Mm. Uh, How have you used your voice to motivate others? Oh, my goodness. I feel like this is like my my jam, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I'm such an encourager because I know that like we we hear the scripture about you know um life and death is in the power of the tongue uh-huh. but life and death really is in the power of the tongue what you say actually matters and i remember um I was talking to a person, I was counseling a young, lady, a young lady, and she was recalling things that her mom had said to her when she was like seven or eight. It was maybe two really negative things. Uh, and then the rest of her life, her mom had been giving her all these positive accolades and building her up, but she couldn't let go of the two things that she had said that were negative. And that showed me that we will hold on to those things. What we say, they matter to people. They affect how they grow. They affect how they evolve, how they perceive the world, their worldviews, their stance on things. It affects it so much. So for me, like I'm always trying to encourage. I'm like hope centered. Believe the best about yourself. You can do it. Absolutely nothing is impossible. Mm -hmm. Um, Even when I'm going to lead worship, I'm just so filled with hope because I know that everything is temporary. What you're going through, if it's a difficult season right now, is temporary. Things do get better. There is going to be a turn. And so I'm always, always, always. So I, since you I try to always. So you, you brought up the fact that there was a young lady yes. that um, stuck with the two, well, the two words that stuck with her that her mother had said to yes. her. How would you encourage someone that is um, holding on to old words that impact them? How would you encourage them to let go? Or what would you say to them? Because yeah. sometimes it does just kind of, Hang in there. Mm-hmm. It yeah. hangs on. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It it will hang on if you let it. You have to find it within yourself to release that because it becomes a belief of yours. It's not the truth, but it becomes a belief. Then it becomes something foundational. And then you start to look at the world through a cloudy lens because of this faulty belief. It You may feel like you can't let it go. But, baby, you really don't have a choice. So what are some of the steps? Or is there a step? Oh, my goodness. What would you recommend? 
Yes. Because there is someone listening yes. right now. I'm listening. Okay. Look, me too. Tell us. Notes. Help us. So, so it's funny. So the brain, the way the brain works is that the more you do something, the more that it is become is going to become a ritual. It's going to be you're going to turn into a creature of habit. This is going to be the pattern, and it's going to want to maintain the pattern at all costs. So you have to interrupt the pattern. You have to interrupt that thought pattern. So if the thought pattern is negative, this is cognitive behavioral therapy. You need to go into that negative thought, and we need to replace it with what the truth is. What's something that's actually that you can hold on to. Okay. And so by doing that, what you're going to do is you're going to start reciting the truth until it remaps your brain in a healthier way so that when you're back in that situation, you're not triggered. But it starts with letting it go. Oh, come on now. It's like a person who's skiing, you know, and they start going down here and things start to get bad. You ever see how they won't let go of the skis and they fall and they flip and they. And they're still holding on to the ski. Let go. Let go. Wow. Let go. Did y'all hear that? That was a trinket. <laughs> Let it Let's go. go. Let it go. And start go. re-depositing with some good thoughts, with yeah. what is real. What is real? Yeah. I always tell people when they tell me stuff, I say, who told you that? Wow. Who told you that? Oh, wow. Okay, Miss Kayla, what do you, I, I see you wow. over here. I know you want to say Listen, something. Listen, I was just receiving. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. But I, I guess I'll say... Um, you know, obviously through my poetry, you know, I I think sometimes it's easier to keep things to yourself, mm-hmm. especially negative experiences. Um, but I think even with my poetry, God had to show me it's not about you, Mm-mm. not about how you feel, not about how people going to look at you. Mm. It's bigger than you. One of my videos that went viral years ago um, about a past relationship I did not want to say anything. I was like, no, no, God. I'm like, uh-uh. And he said, just trust me. Trust me. Trust me. And he said, I want you to do a visual because I need people to understand the process of healing and what it looks like. You know, you can read it, but you have to have a different level of understanding it. You know, so I try to, I'm an emotional writer, so I can't help but write from an emotional state, but when I write anything, whether it's a caption, my my best poems were birthed from captions, actually, wow. like me writing a caption. Um, but it's just like knowing that somebody, even if it's just one, one person, person, comes and reads that. And that's what I have to trust in my mind. Like, God, this may not get likes. This may not get views. Uh-huh. But even if it's just one, one person, person that reads this and it does something for them, because no matter for, how big or small. That one person is worth it the heal oh, for sure. that one person sure. is worth saving so yes. if we stop worrying about the masses and focus on the one then yeah. we touch that one then we touch that next one and that yeah. next one and that next one and then they're going to go touch someone yes yeah. so wow because i think about myself like who do who did we seek encouragement from if we didn't have that one whatever we heard right. that through that one conversation or that one show that we watched or that one sermon or what, I mean, it was how somebody. would we, yeah, exactly. how would we have healed? How would we so have good. gotten through what we got through if we didn't have something to hold on to? And especially in a world of technology and just, I think of, I, I'm like, I don't see, I, I don't know if I could have got through the things that I went through being a kid in this day and age because you see so much other stuff right (laughs) and and negativity and toxicity that's so normalized and and god is so minimalized in certain spaces and i'm just like if my cousin looks at this if i'm the only person she can get it from let it be me but but it's everything is so normalized because everything is in that phone for them so it's almost like they're numb they're numb to feelings they're numb to emotions Mm -hmm. uh, because they don't have to interact and that's the thing that really um, it just gets me real heavy because I think of this generation when I think of this generation here now I think of my grandchildren you know even my my youngest daughter if you can just put the phone down just mm-hmm. put it down put it down yeah uh, i know 
and, and pick up the phone and call, have a conversation, yeah. or you know, just don't do this. Yeah. Don't do this. Yeah. Because this is not what's really going on. Well, it you teaches know? facades. Mm. You know. That's good, KP. It teaches right facades. I, I need and, to hear you say that yeah, one more time. It it does. It teaches facades, and that was a big part of my breaking general generational curses was yeah. breaking the facade. Yeah. Because that was all I saw around me. I mean, from the church all the way to oh, the left field. Oh God. Uh, facades, and I had to learn the truth and, and my truth yes. and how to walk in that and not feel like I had to be this image of perfection yeah. and when I'm suffering in silence and cause I, that's how I was becoming because that's all I saw around me. So I had to work hard to be different yes. to say, God, I want to address these things. I want to be, I want to be dirty mm -hmm. for you. For like you. I want to see the dirt so mm -hmm. I can clean it. So if I can't see it, yeah. I can't clean it. No, I like that right there. Come on, recovery You first. want to see the dirt. Most people want to cover it up. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And here's what happens when you cover it up. It mm -hmm. never gets cleaned up. Nope. Yeah. It's just a mass. It's just something. Oh, oh my and God. And everyone else suffers because you wouldn't take the time to clean up. Oh, yeah. my God. And that, that's actually where my social media name comes from. A lot of people don't know that. It, it's kind of a double meaning, A Pretty Black. Uh, my friend in, co in high school, whenever he would see me, because I like to put myself together or whatever at school. And she came ready to <laughs> day late. And, <laughs> and, and every time with. he would see me, he would say, hey, pretty black. Yeah. But when I got older, it meant something different for me because I was like, it's cool to be that put together person. That's great. But OK, I'm pretty. But guess what? I'm also black. I'm also mm. dirty. Mm. Like you see the image, the surface level, but yeah. underneath I'm dirt. It's God that makes me clean. Mm. Without that, I'm dirty. You don't like, even you don't even have a clue of what's on no. until you say, oh God. Oh. Sorry. All I can say is ooh. <laughs> I just <laughs> look, what were we talking about? I, I thought we were talking about the power of your voice. <laughs> ooh. The voice is working in here today. It is. Oh my God. The Love and Victory Show with Val is brought to you by l v Enterprise Resources Incorporated, a nonprofit equal opportunity provider for people living with disabilities. When you donate to l v Enterprise Resources Incorporated, not only are you helping someone further their education, acquire job skills, and find a job, you are also doing your part to create a stronger, more diverse, and inclusive society. l v also provides resources for counseling for the disabled and their families. To find out more, or if you'd like to make a donation, please visit lverinc.com or call 832-336-0126. Once again, that's lverinc.com or 832-336-0126. With LNV Enterprise Resources Incorporated, the possibilities are endless. Let's explore them together. VK Consultant Group is a proud sponsor of the Love and Victory Show with Val. Are you thinking of starting a medical practice and need some help? Well, VK Consultant Group has been awarded Top Medical Practice Consultant Service of 2020. For over three decades, they've offered services like concierge medicine, credentialing, billing, revenue cycle management, and so much more. For more information, visit vkconsultantgroup.com or call 713-893-7401. Once again, that's vkconsultantgroup.com or 713-893-7401. VK Consultant Group, your competitive edge. Miss Crystal, uh, I know it's not that often, but I want you to share with the people. I know it's something you're getting out of this, or it's something you want to just throw in. Come on, give it to us. I was just taking it all in, because I feel like y'all, all of y'all have some meaningful voices that need to be heard to the people that need the message so when i think of your generation are we talking to you guys or are we talking at you all mm. because i mm. feel like you guys have such a powerful voice and a powerful message but i think sometime there's a disconnect there's a disconnect yeah. so are we talking at you guys or are we talking to you guys or what can we do differently so you can hear us i feel like it's up to us to actually listen to the message that's being told to us first off because I feel like at the end of the day the message is clear 
it's just that um, borderline conversation that either we fall flat on or we feel like it isn't being receptive. So we just need to listen more, I think, at least my generation. So do you think that it, you say we need to, it's the conversation, is it the way that we're delivering the message? Or do you think it's really you just need to listen? I think it's, I think because it could be Because you have a powerful both. voice. Yeah. Does it come off as an attack to some people? Because I think, you know, even just when I think about our generation, if we're not, um, it's kind of like that term when they talk about people that say, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, and like letting that go. Mm -hmm. Like, well, this is just who I am. Is that what you're kind of talking about of like you have to level with yourself Mm -hmm. to be able to receive it in a healthy way and hear it? fully for what it is and not take it as something else I honestly think like something what you said earlier it's a facade so we basically really put this guard up that we want to be heard but at the same time we have to in order to be heard we have to know to listen to so I think that's just really Mm. what it is I would say even I think some of the older generation, even the millennials, were so um, afraid to offend Gen Z. Mm -hmm, Um, So we don't say anything at all. But a brother is born in adversity. A friend is born in adversity. You have to be okay with sometimes offending someone to actually help them to see that maybe the way that you're thinking or doing something isn't the best way. Way to do it. And and, and the reason I bring that up is because it's important to me to have a conversation Mm -hmm. you know when I walk into a room I'm very intentional I look at the person I don't talk past the person because a lot of times they're going to say they're fine but I have to (laughs) see it yeah and I think if we spend more time having intentional conversations and just kind of when you go and you interact with someone just take the time and look them in the eye or just take five minutes you're not that busy no yeah and and you know just take a couple of minutes and just let them know that you they're important yeah. and I know we're talking about the powers in your voice but again they may need that word from you they yeah. may need to have that conversation they may need someone to encourage them yeah. you don't know what they're going through yeah it's funny our friend that introduced us show she has this journal and it's said and it's called how's your spirit today Mm. and that that was one of those things you know that really hit me of you know we so often say how are you I'm fine Mm. I'm good Mm -hmm. but if somebody asks you how's your spirit today yeah that is gonna make you kind of hmm you know, take like a think, back. take a you step back think. and really think, well, how is, how it? is your spirit yeah. today? You know, I, I think I'm the reason I am that person that takes the time to do the eye contact and the heart check. It's because yeah. I was a expert at saying I was fine yeah. mm-hmm. when I was dying on the inside. Yeah. Uh, and guess what? I said I was fine and people went on uh, to the point that um I was so low, and I talk about this all the time, and that's why I'm so intentional about that. I tried to take my life. And so um, it's important to me to connect Mm. my soul with another person's soul, um, with their heart. And we have to do a better job as men and women when it's people we care about, and especially this younger generation. They are so... They're moving so much, and mm-hmm. they're doing everything else, yeah. but they're looking for something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're looking for someone to connect yeah. to them and tell them the truth. Yeah. Um, and love them. Love them. And, and not just tell them the truth in a relationship with where you don't have a relationship with right. them. I'm mm. not just going to come to you, Crystal, and start Ooh. telling you X, Y, and Z, and I don't have a relationship. relationship. Why would you listen to me? You're not Why gonna. wouldn't you become offended? You should. That's another thing. How about we take a step back and we 
come down sometimes from our high horse huh. and we get to know them what they're struggling with wow. that uh the gen z's are the most um anxious oh my God. and most depressed statistically generation than any generation yes, before ever. but they also are dealing with so much and i always say that if any generation is going to change the world eradicate a lot of the social issues that have been able to fester for centuries it's going to be the gen z it's going to be the gen they z. are fiery they have grit yes yes persistence oh my god but they are the most depressed they are and, and i don't think i've ever heard the word depression so much yes. as I've oh, heard so it sad. over the last few years mm -hmm. as I look and even before the pandemic yeah but more so since the pandemic yeah. right. you know and it's just I really do believe that we need to start using our voices I agree um, to be a little more positive yeah. to help and you know and be there for them yeah you know, now we're going to empower others with our voice. Are y'all ready to do some empowering? Yes. Always. Okay, that's what we talk, that we lead, <laughs> we lead right in there. Let's talk about empowering others with our voices. What are some of the things that we can do that would be in, impactful, that we can empower young men mm. as a woman mm. or as a young lady? What can we do? I'll just, I'll jump on that if no okay. one else. One of the things that I think, because I have sons, I have grandsons, and mm -hmm. I think we as women and some of the younger generation, we tend to be very, you know, we're very, uh, matter of fact. <laughs> yes, and this is no disrespect to the men at all. Men are much more reserved, kind of laid back. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when we come at them like that, most of the time, you're shutting them down for yeah. sure mm -hmm. you know so I think that we need to be more conscious you know we say we want a man or a young man to be this all of this to us yeah. you know you want him to treat us well mm -hmm. we want him to wine and dine us yes and then when he steps out the way and he does something one thing wrong maybe he didn't call you at that right particular time <laughs> and what do we do we take him from the top to the bottom. We done ate him up, and then now we want him to stand up and be a man Ooh, to us. Mm. That's so deep. That, that is so, so deep. deep. I, I, I'd say, ooh, that's that was something truth. I really had to deal with as a young woman because I grew up around such strong, powerful women mm -hmm. and single women. Mm. And That's why they were, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, you're telling the truth. <laughs> um, but but I think it is something, especially being someone who was raised by a single mother, a single grandmother. And I did have my 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 grandfather on my mom's side, but I just saw so many women around me doing things that I don't think I ever knew the best way to communicate mm -hmm. to men because I was never in those situations and I never saw the women in my life in those situations. So when it came time for me, it's like I almost had that expectation of, well, I'm just being who I'm supposed, supposed to, to be, be. Yeah. to even be a good wife. Like yeah. I'm doing my part and you should be doing your part. I never ever even thought of what if he's not there yet? Yeah. And because of the expectation on me to be a certain type of woman, mm -hmm. I didn't think about his journey and his process and how that should look and how that should show up, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had to learn like, okay, I'm a work in progress yeah. and he's a work in progress because, you know, a lot of us women, we're, we're like shaped from birth. Yes. Like, do this, do this, you know, you got like we're in, and I remember having a conversation with a man and he told me that he's like, y'all are shaped from birth on how to be wives, mm. but like who is teaching husbands how to be husbands? Like That's we would thing. assume it's the church, but let's be honest, honest. that well, some, let's just sit right there. Yeah. yeah. No, let's mm -hmm. just sit right there. <laughs> I think we should sit right there. And I agree. Mm -hmm. We should sit right there mm -hmm. um, because those that don't have a father, Mm -hmm. But the mothers are taking them or sending them to church. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are men in the church yeah. that should be teaching them, but what are they showing them? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying all churches, but I'm saying, um, what are they showing them? They're showing them how they have their, some of them have their wives over here. Mm -hmm. And they see sister so-and-so over here, but he over here grinning at sister so-and-so. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry. It's the truth. I'm going you. there. Listen, I saw it's it the first hand. Mm -hmm. And then you have, well, they see the man of God in church, but then when he's not on the in the pulpit, he's cursing up yeah. one side and down the other. Yeah. So what are we teaching the young men? What are they being taught? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, there's something, too. You are a product of your environment. Yes. When you see something repeatedly, that becomes your default unconsciously. Or you work so hard not to be that person, and you end the up being, being that, just person. that person. Because they leave. They're in the church. Yeah. And then they leave out of the church, and they see the same behavior. So how are they able to... I, I really think that we... I'm sorry. No, this I, is so good. There. And you should. And we Because should, it's a problem yeah. and it needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I see people and I think in the church sometimes when those situations are happening, we're too comfortable with going to hell mm -hmm. when we're in the church. Mm -hmm. We're too comfortable with being a Pharisee. I call myself a recovering Pharisee. Come on now. But we're too comfortable with that Pharisee mindset of continuing to clean the outside of the cup, but never... We talked about this focusing on the inside of the cup. <sighs> And it's so unfortunate because these people are the representation of God. So then people draw away from the father because they say, if this is who you are, if you're anything like this person, I want no, no connection. No connection. No part. That's why, let's just, since we're going there, mm -hmm. that's why this generation is into the, the what do you call it? The sense. Oh, the, the universe what and is the that? sky daddy yeah. and the crystals. Yes. And yeah. Yes. Yes. That's the, the sky daddy. When did we well, start? What is that? that? The sky daddy is is God, but they don't call him that no more. He's just the sky daddy or the universe. Yeah, I think it really is an issue, and it's sad because I had a conversation recently with some young ladies, and we were talking about relationships, and they were talking about celibacy, mm. and I said my huh. first experience of feeling bad about being celibate was from a Christian man. So if a Christian man is frowning upon celibacy, huh. where does that leave us as Christian women who are trying to live the way God intends? And we have men in the church who are not held to that same standard, but here we are being prepped for them and then people are now getting into marriages with toxic ways of love. And, you know, it's just a it's a cycle. It's a whole cycle. It is. This this here right here. Sorry. This right here mm -hmm. is a part two and a part three. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. You know, I, 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 no, this, no, because we really need to have this conversation. Yeah. And yeah. it's unfortunate. And I know that with the podcast we have time restraints on them mm -hmm. but i do believe that this is a conversation that we need to peel back yeah. yes. and have that real real raw raw conversation i think you two ladies are the best ones to have it with yes uh, but i'm blessed that i know people like a adonis mm -hmm. uh, my friend robert because we can have that conversation of what is the healthy way to communicate to men and 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 the thing is is having someone that is healthy mm -hmm. to give you that feedback yep. exactly imagine yep. going to someone and you don't know that they're not healthy mm -hmm. yeah. but you're getting that advice that's why you got to check before you start opening yourself up Ooh, to try that spirit yeah you didn't try the spirit mm. you frustrated but you didn't try to you missed a step and the other thing and I, and before i go i have to say this to my younger generation, I mean, um, I don't know all the, what is it? The, the Gen Z. The Gen Zs. What's the and next the millennials. one? the millennials. Okay, and what's that other one? The baby one? No, that's the Generation X or Y? Generation X. Okay, whatever. Y'all know what we're talking about. They say Gen Z and Generation X. Okay, that's what I'm, y'all know what we're talking about. And you do? Okay. Stop, and I'm going to start with the ladies. Stop feeling like you have to give all of yourself to a man mm. to get a man. Mm. Mm. Why don't you start respecting and holding on to some of that 
greatness that God have you until he sends you the right man. I always like to use this, and it's what I tell my, my young ladies. You can have an American Express card. That's what you have. Mm. Or you can have a debit card. A debit card, you have to put money on it. Mm. American Express, you can keep swiping it. So you can either be a American Express mm -hmm. and take care of yourself. And? Or you can be a debit card. Mm. You figure that out down the street. Some harsh transactions. You understand? Because what they're doing and what you're doing, because they can't do anything that you don't allow. So start respecting yourself, young ladies. And stop using your your body and your your sexiness and your all of the thing all of the beautiful things that God has given yes. you to attract something that is not even worth attracting. I know that that is not a part of oh, the conversation. A part, a part it was of for somebody. That is my power. It was for somebody. I had to use that word. Please. Well, that's another way to use your voice. Yes. You gotta love yourself. You gotta know yourself. You gotta know your worth. Mm. And before I go, can you give the people, Miss Kayla, a little poem or Let's something? Go. Oh, you thought I wasn't gonna give j just uh, just give us a little something something for the people before we go. Oh my goodness. Mm, that'll line up with what <clears throat> we're talking about today. Wow, it's been a long time. Let me see what I could think of off the top of my head. Um, Wow. I'm going to say it slow just because I don't want to mess it up. And okay. God, be with me because it's been a minute. It's okay. <laughs> um, please don't envy me. Your eyes haven't seen what I've seen. You haven't been where I've been all the time I've spent on my knees. Praying God, begging please for him to have mercy on me. The days I spend so lonely. Gas tank on E. No hanging out with the crew. No drinks on me. Oh, say, can't you see past what your eyes perceive? My past you wouldn't believe. These words are not just conceived. I ask God, please heal my pain. So many relationships strained, and though my heart may be strong, my body is drained. I trust it's not all in vain, just like the Clark sister saying, nothing on this train to lose but everything to gain. They prescribed me pills so I wouldn't feel, but they made my reality seem so unreal. So I was forced to take all the hits, yeah, I was forced to feel. Forced to examine what was fraud versus what was real. Felt like a game of Call of Duty as I took every kill. God was removing my outer being like a banana peel. He broke all the facades so I could deal. So now I spit for a cause, not for applause, but for you to heal. Mm -hmm. And we're going to end it with the power is in your voice. Miss Kayla just shared that with us. Love I want to thank you, Kayla. I want to thank you, Steph. Steph, I know the audience, the people were blessed today. I thank you, uh, my wonderful listeners. Until next time. <laughs>